Hi everyone, welcome to the part two of the Trend Micro DOP. In the previous uh, session, we already introduced you on how to enable the DOP from the Apex One as a Service Console. On this portion, I will introduce you on how to configure the policies from the console. All right. These are the processors in order to configure the DOP. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. As I mentioned, the first thing you need to configure this uh, identifier. With the identifier, then you configure these uh, templates. With the templates, then you configure the policies and assign to the agents that you want to protect the, the data from being leaking out. Okay, first, let's talk about the data identifier. There are few ways you can identify this data. One of the options is called the expressions. So what is expressions all about? I'll give you a very simple example. If you have a CCTV which you put in monitoring your customer certification, if you have a front desk, you will monitor the facial expressions of your customers. So if they give you a smile or if they are not happy, so from there you can detect whether this uh, customer is happy or not happy. So the same applies to the DLP expression. So it's just a way to define how you want to detect the type of data that you want to protect. So if you uh, went through any uh, DLP solution, the, you might heard about this uh, regex expression, which is called regular expression. So you need to have probably some minor programming understanding in order to understand what this expression all about. But don't worry, if you do not have the programming background, Primarco uh, had done a very good work in a way that they really predefined many of the expressions which are commonly available uh, in the market. So this is a, just a single, one page of the sample of the expressions that you can see. And you can see their credit card number, email addresses, and uh, the rest. So if you go and Google search for the DOP list, Seven, which is the latest edition of the Trend Micro predefined expressions, you can get the list of those expressions. Of course, if you want to have uh, more understanding or more deep understanding of the expressions, you can go and watch this YouTube. It shows you how to actually define the regular expressions. Then probably uh, from there you can have a much better understanding of uh, how to define the expression. So if you're not, probably this slide will give you some basic understanding on how to understand the regular expressions. So if you look at this, this is a sample template which I extracted from the Tremicro console for the data identifier under this. Uh, Malaysia's uh, phone number. As you can see on the top here, this is the expressions all about, and these are all the coding, which will able to let the software define and uh, detect whether that is a phone number. So I already uh, subdivided into subsections so that you can have a better understanding on how, how it works. But uh, before that, you can also look at this uh, display data. It uh, gives you some sample of uh, data which will be identified. Like uh, this is a household number, this is a mobile number, with the, this is an international phone number. And these uh, characters that uh, actually specified in this will be these are the numbers. And the minimum and the maximum numbers defined. And the validator is a Malaysia phone number. So to make things easier, Micro already uh, allows you this to key in certain sample data. This is the test data, and you can see the test result. They already identified this is a phone number. So back to the regular expressions explanation. If you look at the part one, this is the part one with the curly bracket. It means uh, any characters. With this, uh, this uh, symbol it means the exception of uh, digit means any non digit as I put it here any non digits and the second section is talk about this uh, slash plus six or oh, this is the all gate number six 
okay? And behind that, you see a question mark. Question mark means it could be zero or one instances of this data detected. So on the number two, we can see it's a plus six or slash, slash plus six or six. And on the number three that you can see there's a slash D bracket one or two. It simply means this, this is, I need to define there's a digit with a single or dual digit. And the number four here, which is a bracket of a slash S, which is space or slash dash. So this is space or dash. And uh, part number five is the uh, same as uh, number three, which means I will need to detect there's a digit of uh, three to four continuous digits. So with this in mind, you can see that I will able to detect this is actually a Malaysia phone number. All right. Okay, and this is the sample of this uh, predefined keywords is another way of how you can identify the data. Uh, just now we have gone through the expression. And uh, okay, in defining the policies, there's a thing that uh, many customers ask me. So what does it mean by this uh, local or external agent? So uh, local or internal agent, which means this this is how they define the internet agent and the external agents. It depends on the location of this uh, agent when this is uh, performing the scanning. So the location criteria is actually uh, is defined here. So with the connection status, so it would define whether this is in uh, internal or external agent. Okay, so let's go through the actual console on how this policy is all about. Let me just sign in on my FX1 as a service console. Okay. On this console, uh, the DOP setting is all configured in this area, which is under policies, resources. This is the part which I mentioned the DOP data identifiers. So you can see in this uh, data identifier, there are three ways of identifying it, which is the first, which I already mentioned, is called expressions. So if you come to here, this is the one that I show you the Malaysia phone number. All right, here you can just key in the test data and you will see if you will be able to capture the data. So this allows you to reduce a false alarm. So you need to really understand the regular expressions, define it properly, test it until you are happy with the result, then you only apply that. It, else you might have some false alarm that uh, detected some data which it shouldn't be identified under this category as defined by the organization. So the second type of uh, way that you can define this uh, data identify is actually by the file attributes. So these are the list of the file attributes at the supported at the moment. Of course, uh, most of the time we would not use this because uh, this is uh, not that uh, flexible compared to the regular expressions and the keywords. So let's come to the keywords here. They are the predefined keywords in this uh, policy. So I, if you look further down, you can see there are certain customized keywords which I already predefined uh, before I start the, this recording. So let, let me just show you this. Okay, it can be very simple if it could be just like uh, ABC company, ABC uh, St. John Berhad. So with this simple keyword, you will able to detect, okay, this is uh, considered one of the keywords that I want to define. Or you can also use this uh, keyword with uh, weight. Okay, so you can select the criteria that instead of depending on one data uh, data that to be identified as a private competition, you can have a combined combination of a score for keywords, which means that I define a keyword which is called the private. In another keyword which is called a contract and each keyword I will give a score of one and here I can say that uh, this uh, score threshold means more than one I will define I will detect that as a data that I need to be uh, protected 
So as long as any file which I take as a private, which is a score of one, and a contract, which is a score of one, so both I have a score of two, so it exceeded the threshold, then this will be the thing that I want to protect. This is how simple. So this is a all gate in between. Okay, then this, uh, okay, there's another one. Uh, this is another keyword which I already uh, put in there. If, if any document which already have uh, approved my manager, I can also put it here as another keyword. You will see that in the next video on how this could be useful when we define the policy. All right. So after you define this uh, data identifier, the next thing is you need to define the templates. Okay, Trendmarker also has given you some sample templates which you can utilize here. All right, of course I have uh, configured my own template here, just to show you how it can be done. And if you can see, I have this uh, managed ABC internal. So here you can set the condition statement. I can say that uh, for this one, I want to have this, uh, these two identifier. This is an end gate. So as, I, as long as I detected this uh, data identifier with this data identifier, ABC, and with this internal use, I will flag that as a confidential data. That's one way. Another way of doing is probably, okay, you can see this DLP keyword with weights. If you look at this condition statement, I said that uh, as long as I detect there's a keyword with, with the weight data identifier detected, we also detected there is a Malaysia IC number detected. So it will be detected as uh, the data that I want to protect. However, because of the operator accept, is, is, as long as this document have this accept, data identifier within this document approved by manager, I would allow the document to be released because uh, this is my company policy. Of course, this is just a sample. It depends on how you want to define your own policies. So after you define this uh, data identifier as well as the templates, so the next thing is, is you need to define the policies. So here is where you can define the policy. I come down to this policy, which I already defined this uh, policy here. Okay, this is my DLP policy, which I already created. Now here you select the template which you already predefined inside this uh, previous step. So here is my selected template. The next thing you need to configure is to define what channels that you want to protect the data from leaking out. So for testing purposes, I select this uh, all the network channels as well as the all the system application channels. All right. So after that, you need to define what action you want to perform upon detection of such uh, document. So there are a few ways you can do that. For first thing. Of course, before you start to implement, you probably want to test, do a test. Here you can just perform a pass, but you will notify the user. You also have a log recorded. Well, if you have this uh, endpoint encryption, you can also encrypt this data before being sending out. If you want the stricter policy, then uh, when or when, during you, when you go to live or production, you can start to block, however, you still allow the user to send it out by notifying the user, all right? And you also have perform a log of this incident. And uh, you also allow, will be allowed user to justify the reason why he want to send out so that he will still able to perform his daily task. However, such uh, justification will be recorded for auditing purposes. So after you have done this, here you just save the policy then here you can just say where you want to deploy to which agents so you can start to deploy to the target agent and see if this is a start to deploy to the target agent which is under pending and after deploy then you will show here deployed 
So uh, it's that simple for the DOP console. And the next video will show you the actual what uh, happens when this deep, uh, DOP policy is in, uh, in effective at the endpoint. So enjoy and stay tuned. Thank you.